The Toyota CHR was launched back in 2016. We only saw it obviously come here last year, about the beginning of 2017. And then this year they added an extra top of the range model to its range. <laughs> it's a good start. Um, which is what I'm driving, which is the luxury. And it is quite luxurious. So the CHR, it's sort of like an extroverted, eccentric crossover, if you will. Um, the style, the styling is, oh, and I know it's subjective, but so I'm really undecided about it, but I think some people are gonna love it or hate it. I think what it is for me is that I look at it and I'm like, oh, that looks quite cool, but it just screams sort of impractical because we all know that I am a practical person, especially when it comes to cars. Even though I've got my little wild side, you know. Anyway, the outside of this luxury model is a two-tone vibe. So you've got like a black roof, black side mirrors, um, black pillars. And then you can choose between four colors um, for the paintwork vibes, which is this one's pearl white or something. You get a blue, there's a red and like a silvery vibes. Um, you can also, if you want, as another option, because you know, Toyota wants to give you all the choices, is choose a white roof and like a black car. I'd like, to, I haven't seen one of those yet. Um, well, I just haven't noticed it, but I think it'd look pretty cool. Speaking of impractical, mm, so look, these re rear seats are not amazing. Um, the space back there is, ah, oh, yeah, it's all right, it's not great. And also, to be fair, it's, I'm never sitting in the back, so <laughs> I don't care. But I think other people might not be thrilled. Um, and as for the rear passenger door handles, that is not a thing. It's weird. I don't like how to open that. It's not a thing. And because it's like Christmas time, oh, I'm so excited. I am the biggest Christmas freak. On the planet, no, there. I've seen other people who are far worse than I am, but I f love Christmas. I thought, well, we have to have some Christmas music at some point, which is again my favorite type of music. But inside, it's all quite you know like well modern and filled with features this is obviously top of the range obviously filled with like you know you've got heated seats the car will park itself for you do you know it's got all those sort of added luxuries that in fairness we don't actually need but you do pay for and we'll be happy with now the infotainment system is rich in features I got that from the press release, <laughs> but it is, um, and it's fine. I always, as always, miss a button and especially just a volume knob. I hate, and even on here, like, I just want a knob, a knob that I turn would be great. <laughs> I can never say that without having a bit of a chuckle. The only issue I have with this entertainment system is where this USB port is positioned. It's the same as like in the Renault Duster. It's just, it just then drops your cord and everything across everything. That's not amazing. But it's like I'm being finicky. Do you know what I mean? It's got the same 1.2 liter under the engine. Um, not under the engine, under the bonnet. It's a 1.2 liter turbocharged engine. You get 85 kilowatts of power and eight, 185 newton meters of torque. It's mated to a CVT transmission. The luxury only comes with CVT. It's not horrific. That's a good thing. <laughs> From a fuel consumption point of view, they claim 6.4 liters per 100 Ks, I'm on 7.4, I've had it for a week. So that's not too bad, huh? Especially for me. Um, and it's a very comfortable ride, it's very 
smooth, um, I think anybody would be happy buying it. What I do appreciate is that it's sort of Toyota stepping out, you know, of their little conservative box with this. So I think people are going to buy this for its styling. It's sort of like one of those, like Hyundai Kona or like in the Sunduke, etc. That people either love them or they hate them, but they buy them for what they look like. You don't buy this car, I think, for particularly practical reasons. Oh, you need to know the price. Um, <laughs> no, fair enough. So this luxury model goes for 426,300 Rand, which competitively sure. But I, I think if you like the styling, unless you need all the extra features and stuff, which often you actually don't, literally ask yourself the question, do I really need these things or are they nice to have? You could just actually opt for the standard model do you know, and, and save yourself almost 100,000 Rand. So, your choice. It is your money, not mine. I'm merely here for, as an impartial judge. <laughs>